Hey everybody, welcome back to the farm. So, uh, this morning, I don't know what that was, 9 o'clock, 9.30, I got out here and got started on this piece that I was kind of trying to get ready for the uh, cows for the impending potential blizzard conditions towards the end of the week and the real cold weather they're talking. So, uh, I was trying to get things situated for them so we won't have to uh, hopefully run equipment for a few days there when it's real cold and the cows will uh, have protection and all we'll have to do is keep an eye on their water and uh, on them obviously too and see if there's anything they need but um, and then I think actually I come up with another spot here I think I'm going to uh, potentially set out a few more bales tomorrow I might uh, it doesn't look like we're gonna get the snow they were talking this afternoon so I might work on hauling a few more loads of hay tomorrow um, if it works out so if I do that there's a uh, spot here in this piece that I think I'm going to uh, maybe set another three or four bales out to have them ready to bale graze, but then just throw a uh, temporary wire up, uh, just throw one of the poly wires, single poly wire up around those. Um, I don't want to give them too many bales at a time, uh, so hopefully we kind of minimize the waste. I mean, we're going to get the nutrients and fertility out of it uh, and the extra litter on the ground in here, but, you know, I want to try to stretch my hay out too, so uh, try to balance that out. But Anyway, I think I'm going to set an additional, uh, at least three, maybe four bales looking at the area here, um, out ready to graze. And then uh, if we get to Saturday and it looks like they're kind of running out of their other hay, uh, we've got options to get us through. Uh, I guess I'd get us through Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, um, maybe even into the first part of the week. Uh, yeah, if I'd set out four more, because there's about... I would say if you're figuring thousand pound animal units there's going to be 55 to 60 animal units in this group grazing or bale grazing on this hay so um, that should I mean I think I don't know I guess I didn't do the math right here on the spot but anyway I uh, I figure they should be using 22 to 20 500 pounds of hay at the most roughly but with it being real cold they could go through considerably more so I just want to have you know plenty set out here if that cold stretches out a little longer you don't have to uh, hopefully get any equipment out for a couple more days but I'll show you kind of what I what I end up doing with these trees and what we end up with and what the cows are going to have for protection and then the few bales we've got sitting out in here so whoop, here's a gate we come in earlier uh, up here at the top in the other video I did I guess and I cut all these trees that were up here on top of this hill I left I left the ones along the fence line so that'll still give them some uh, protection here along the south fence and then it gets thicker as we go down that way but the ones that I cut off up in this area you can see a few of the stumps here as we spin around but there's bunch more of them that are kind of hard to see excuse me there but anyway I took all these that I cut up here and I left this there was a row of cedars kind of in well from you can see from here over to there there's what six seven trees in there that were pretty dense that are they're about 15 foot tall um, well 10 to 15 foot shorter ones to the taller ones and so everything I cut up here I just kind of gently stacked them against those other trees with the skid loader I just picked those up with the forks and kind of laid them in there as soft as I could to try not to break those other ones up I realized that if I get a bunch of snow and stuff on them it's probably going to uh, break some of those limbs off those trees but it's gonna break them off at a low enough height that as those trees get bigger I'm gonna cut the lower branches off of them anyway uh, just to help the grass grow underneath there and provide you know some shade for the cows to kind of get in under them and the cows will break all those smaller branches if you don't trim them off so anyway this is going to uh, create a little windbreak here, and then actually I had more trees than I thought to stack up, so I bridged this gap between these trees in this section here too. So this is a spot if there's a real strong north wind, that's well, that's a good 70, 75 feet probably stretched along there, looking back that way. Um, that gives them a pretty good spot from the north and the west if they want to get on the top side of this. They can, and if there's a strong south-southwest wind, they can get around here on the 
on the bottom side of it there's uh you probably notice here a couple spots there's some trees left some small stuff that's just left piled up i didn't want to mess around with shoving it in against these other uh kind of windrows of trees and and stacking it in against these other ones and then have to pick it all out of there later so i just actually had the kids out here helping and i threw some of that smaller stuff on those uh just on those piles but and we got this bottom Allison and the kids moved the wire for me. We've got this set up. There's a temporary reel down here in the corner. You can see a reel hanging there with a short wire going over to the to the uh, I'll just walk down there to the other wire. Keep them from coming in here for now. But then when we want to open that up, when they come down here to water Wednesday afternoon or sometime Wednesday, we'll come out and we'll we'll take that down and. Uh, yeah, it's, there's about a 10 foot, 10, 12 foot gap right here um, where they can come through to get in here. And hopefully we don't have any issues with the water. Uh, this water is set up so it continuously overflows and it's overflowing over there where you can see that big chunk of ice at the end of that pipe. But um, we'll have to just keep an eye on that and make sure that stays open. But it's running out of there at a pretty good clip right now, probably a little faster than it needs to be. but. We had it slowed down the other day, and then when all the cows come down and drink, it's not uh, filling up for them fast enough. So, uh, and really, that that uh, precast water should have more dirt piled up around it. But another one of them things that needs improved here in the future. So, so anyway, I got a bale set down here below that uh, kind of windbreak we made up there that I showed. I left a few of the uh, nicer cedars out in the middle here, and then you notice out in here there's still. A lot of the small brush there's some hedge trees and some little thorny locusts thorny locusts there and a few others and i snipped a few off that were in the way but the rest of these i'm going to leave them for right now because i just soon uh, treat those stumps when i cut them off and i wasn't going to take the time to mess with all that today so then this bigger spot i was talking about earlier where i was going to make a windbreak these were the three this tree one in the middle there and one up there were the ones i was going to uh the ones i was going to leave and then fill in between them so you can see I put trees in here from both sides just kind of stacked them in here all the trees I cut to kind of fill those gaps and that created a uh oh we got an emergency Nehemiah's helping unwrap bales and he wrapped the uh wrap around his hand just unwrap it the other way buddy make a new make a new one of it they're working on unwrapping bales for me the yellows are out here helping me. They're chauffeuring me around to move truck and trailer and skid loader around so I could get bales. And uh, they're helping unwrap the bales. So anyway, that made about a 75 foot windrow. Which you know, if I was going to do it with stock bales, I'd take a couple dozen stock bales, and I don't have any. Plus, I'd have to move them out here. And when I'm done with this piece, I'd have to move them somewhere else for a windbreak, or I would have to. Uh, um, you know just take them out of here to use them up somewhere but i don't have much use for uh stock bales really because i'm trying to keep the cows out moving around around the farm in areas that need the uh need the nutrients and keep them spreading it so i don't have to spread it next year but um anyway here's the other side of that and that one runs it it angles towards us well the tail end down here angles southwest just a little bit but it's pretty it's pretty direct north south and it's like i said it's about 75 feet maybe just over 75 feet long and those trees the way they're stacked in there are eight nine eight nine feet high on average probably there's places like there that sticks up higher and stuff but on average pretty easy eight to nine foot um oh yeah easy eight to nine foot average and that's we're up about four foot to the top edge of that one there and it's not quite halfway up so anyway that gives them there oh yeah these guys are doing a good job unwrapping they got three of these unwrapped already i take long enough doing this video they're going to have all the work done for me unwrapping them so again you can see over in this area and back up there towards the ranger up towards where he's unwrapping that one you can uh see this is all a lot more open now you can see down there to that pond dam and down to this other uh down to this other pond so um that opens this all up a little more for us but you can see they're gonna have 
a good windbreak here on the south along this fence. I left more of the trees out from the fence because when I take the I'm going to take that fence out of there, I'm going to have to cut, or I want to cut all the trees out that are in the fence row, but I'm hoping to still kind of end up with a line along there that'll stay uh, just for, you know, winter uses in the future. But this area will probably, you know, there's pretty good ground cover and stuff in here now. Um, there was pretty good residual last time we moved them out of here. So they'll, you know, we could use this a time or two when it's cold, but we won't confine them in here. Well, they won't even be confined in here this time. I mean, if they decide they're somewhere else, they'd rather be out there, which I can't think so in the area they're that's open to them right now, but if there's an area they'd rather uh, go out and find protection in or go back out and graze on something they left behind, I guess I guess they're welcome to, but uh, I think this will be a lot more comfortable for them. And then from the north and east, they'll have protection right down in here against these trees. All the way back along here, there's another pretty solid, uh, pretty solid windbreak for them there with those cedars and and uh, locust trees and stuff that are all tangled together in there. Maybe a, it looks like there might be actually a good walnut or two in there, down in behind there. So anyway, um, there's just a lot of brushy stuff in there, but, but all the way along there is gonna make a pretty good windbreak. So from the north and east, they're gonna be well protected. They're gonna be well protected. A couple different options from the west, and I think they're gonna be good in here, so. Anyway, I just wanted to take a little time to show everybody what we ended up with and uh, kind of how we were uh, preparing to protect the cows and and also to make sure we're uh, protecting the uh, you know the farm and stuff at the same time as far as limiting uh, you know a bunch of over impacting an area or or uh, you know making an area that gets uh, fouled out by too much manure and urine and things like that and. Especially on a slope like this, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to get too heavy of manure and urine distribution up in here, and then end up with just having the nutrients run off down into that draw, and ultimately down into that pond later on. So I uh, want to make sure we're, you know, taking good care of the area. So uh, if I don't get another video of anything up before Christmas. Hope everybody has a Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoy the videos. Enjoy the uh, food that you have and hopefully you get to spend time with family and loved ones. So I'll see everybody out at the farm next time. Bye.